Welcome back to the course on design of power electronic converters. We were discussing electromagnetic interference in power electronics. And uh, last lecture we saw uh, the common mode noise and differential mode noise. So now let us see some of the solutions uh, that can be used to, to solve the problem of EMI in power electronic converters. To solve the problem of uh, EMI or to make power electronic converters electromagnetically compatible that is uh, to meet the EMC standard which is required for the particular application. Normally there are two main methods, one is uh, design of filter EMI filters and second is enclosure. Now enclosure means uh, the converter will be kept inside some box usually it is a metallic box and the shape of the metallic box uh, how you design that metallic box uh, that uh, whether there are holes in it or not or whether uh, how many holes you put inside it for ventilation uh, those enclosures they sort of form uh, become like an antenna or also are uh, able to uh, prevent the problem of uh, radiated emissions. So, uh, enclosures are used for mainly to solve the problem of radiated EMI and uh, your EMI filters are used to solve the problem of uh, conducted EMI. Now, uh, these are uh, generally more expensive solutions because they are done towards the end of the design after you have uh, done the basic design of the converter, you have designed the PCBs, you have tested it you verify the operation and uh, then finally you go for EMI testing you see the levels or you determine what could be your EMI levels and then you try to design the filter and uh, then you, uh, you try to meet the EMC standard and further after that you also do the enclosure design. Now if we do not handle the problem of EMI from begin with at the design stage then uh, what will happen in the uh, towards the end then uh, the uh, more amount of uh, interference disturbance may be present and uh, then we have uh, to uh, use expensive filters and more expensive enclosures uh, to reduce the problem of interference. So, it is important from uh, the very beginning of the design we should be aware of the problem of interference and uh, we should take measures so that the uh, EMI is less. So uh, for that what are the measures that can be done is first one is a proper PCB layout. I have shown you before that PCB itself is a very big uh, source of uh, parasitics and uh, lead to lot of uh, noise and disturbances in the circuit. So then uh, you have to ensure that uh, that when you design the PCB that means first step that you are going to place the different components in different positions then you give a thought of uh, the, the likely interference that may be taking place. So, the positioning of the or the placement of different components is very important. And uh, then when you further do the uh, tracking, you place the traces at that time also you have to be careful and thoughtful about what is the signal that is going to be carried by that particular trace, what is its frequency, the nature of the waveform, how much voltage, how much current it is going to carry and uh, whether the uh, trace which is adjacent to it, uh, uh, whether there will be interference between the two adjacent traces or not or between. Uh, a trace of one uh, plane of the PCB, one side of the PCB or another side of the PCB. So, uh, these kind of different uh, uh, I mean things have to be looked upon while your PCB layout is being done. 
And uh, uh, today there are software also present uh, which can help you in checking the signal integrity while doing the PCB design. If you wish you can uh, use them also for your PCB layout design. Know that in power electronics when you design the PCB many times on the same board you may be having the power electronic circuit you can have the control circuit you can also have the sensing circuit. So, uh, usually then uh, you will be having one side which may be a mixed signal PCB which may have both analog and digital signals and the other side you have the power electronic circuit which is a huge uh, source of uh, disturbance. So, uh, then you have uh, to do the proper placement and ensure that uh, uh, the tracks are not causing interference with each other. Then next uh, you can use shielded cables. Now, cables or wires uh, this uh, we have to use for any converter. Now, if it is a bare wire it itself acts like an antenna. So, now you can use the shielded wires by shielding I am not talking about just you are putting an insulation because that is not a very effective shield. You have to do proper shielding from the perspective of electromagnetic interference. So, uh, shielded cables they also help in reducing this uh, electromagnetic interference problems. And the cable length should be as uh, small as possible because the bigger the uh, cable is you know that the more the parasitics that you are uh, introducing. Then uh, further your uh, twisting of uh, wires. Now, this kind of a twist can be done between two wires. So, so this is let us say wire 1, conductor 1 and this is conductor 2. So, when you twist them like this what will happen the fields will cancel out and that helps in the reduction of uh, these uh, electromagnetic disturbances. So, this not necessarily can be done for only two wires you can twist uh, multiple wires also and uh, this is called as the Leeds connection. This is also very much used in power electronic converters to reduce the uh, electromagnetic disturbances. Then proper grounding. Now, when I discussed uh, common mode noise and differential mode noise, I showed you how much is the ground involved in your uh, the issue of your common mode noise. So, proper grounding, proper positioning of the grounding is very, very important. A single point uh, grounding is uh, better than uh, grounding being done at multiple places. So, uh, how you do the ground that also plays a very important role in reducing the electromagnetic disturbances. So, these are uh, some of the common things uh, which um, uh, are uh, done uh, uh, very much to reduce the problem of interference. Apart from this also at design stage uh, uh, some of the steps can be taken some uh, uh, strategies can be used by which you can reduce the problem of electromagnetic interference. So, if you uh, recall I had told you that gate resistor it plays a very important role in deciding the turn on and turn off times. Let us say this is a one uh, waveform for a switch and uh, the current through that switch. So, this is for one particular value of gate resistor where you see that uh, this much is the time it is taking to turn on that means the voltage to come down and the current to build up. And similarly this much is what is the time it takes for that particular value of gate resistor for the current to go down and the voltage to build up. Now for another different value of gate resistor if uh, let us say if you reduce the value of RG the gate resistor what will happen is that it, it will increase faster the current will increase faster and the voltage will reduce faster. And uh, similarly, uh, your turn off time can also be 
reduced to certain extent by uh, the use of RG value. So, RG affects the turn on and turn off times and so it also affects the problem of electromagnetic interference. Well, I am not saying that uh, using RG you will be able to meet the EMC standards, your problem of uh, whatever you may be uh, getting for electromagnetic interference can be completely resolved by it. But it helps to certain extent in reducing the uh, uh, disturbances because you are uh, shaping the trajectory of turn on and turn off using the gate resistor, it plays a very important role. Uh, but at the same time know that this is in contradiction to your uh, thermal design because uh, if you increase the gate resistor value then your turn on and turn off times are going to increase and increasing turn on and turn off times means slower turn on and turn off uh, helps in reducing electromagnetic interferences. Uh, but uh, on the other hand that leads to more losses, uh, you more switching losses. So, you have to do a compromise between the two, but still one should be aware that uh, using RG value a little bit playing around with the RG values can affect the uh, performance of your, uh, I mean how much electromagnetic interference is being uh, developed in a particular converter. Apart from that your snubbers also play important role. Again uh, it is not that snubbers can solve the problem of EMI, but since snubbers they also shape the trajectory of turn on and turn off, they affect the turn on and turn off times, they also to certain extent uh, play role in reducing EMI. Then another uh, uh, thing uh, which you should be knowing is the phenomena of uh, soft switching. So, uh, your hard switching is what we have been uh, discussing a lot. So, that uh, the voltage when the voltage comes down it is at the same time the current also builds up. So, during this if you multiply this voltage and current you will see that uh, more amount of losses are taking place at that time. So, that is your hard switching. Now, there are strategies by which uh, it can be so done that uh, when the voltage is uh, coming down, uh, voltage is reducing at that time the current it can be made almost equal to 0 and the current may build up later on. So, this uh, what will happen because of it the loss that will be taking place will be much lesser. So, first of all you get benefit in terms of switching losses. Further, uh, if you are smoothing out uh, your uh, the sharp turn on and turn offs that can also affect or reduce to certain extent the electromagnetic disturbance problem. Again this may not be able to solve the problem, but it does affect to certain extent they may reduce the EMI, it, it is possible although it is not ensured, but they can affect it. So, uh, soft uh, switching that is called as, so this is if you make the current 0 when the voltage is uh, uh, changing that is called as 0 current switching and if, if you make the voltage 0 while the current is changing then that, that is called as 0 voltage switching. And then there are resonant converters also uh, where uh, actually you sort of create some resonating waveforms and uh, uh, with that the converter operates and uh, there your hard switching or this sharp transitions of voltages and currents are avoided. So, uh, uh, this is one example of uh, soft switch converter, this is your familiar edge bridge converter. Now, with this edge bridge uh, this uh, part this LC is uh, added instead of directly connecting this output uh, to this uh, transformer and then rectifying it to obtain DC. So, when this uh, LC is uh, there, so there is a part of a sort of a resonating effect uh, that comes up. Of course, it depends on what value of L and C you are choosing. So, depending on that uh, the shape of these voltages in current waveforms more goes towards a sinusoidal nature, a resonating nature. And then uh, uh, 
uh, this type of waveforms may be obtained. So, this is voltage waveform across uh, one switch V T A plus. So, here this is the current uh, through the switch. So, what you see is during turn on it is hard turn on that means your current is abruptly changing and the voltage will also be abruptly changing at that time. But while turn off what you observe is that the current has become 0 uh, before the voltage is going to build up. So, uh, that is a soft switching that is taking place. So, half uh, time soft switching can also be done either a turn on or, or a turn off or there may be converters where both the turn on and turn off the soft uh, switching may be happening that is your resonant converter. So, there are different types of such converters are there. Of course, they are more uh, difficult to analyze, but they are there they reduce losses and uh, their uh, electromagnetic performance will be different than your hard switched converters. Then next uh, uh, what uh, we have been telling is that, that your this uh, entire problem of all these different frequency components uh, in the range of your uh, electromagnetic interference uh, comes from the shape of the waveform because it is a switched voltage waveform and that is giving rise to those uh, high frequency components. Now, uh, uh, then it also if it is depending on the shape of the waveforms it also depends on the PWM method that you are using. Now, there are various different types of PWM methods that are available and each PWM method may have a slightly different uh, spectrum than uh, the any other uh, PWM method. So, uh, by using PWM method also to certain extent uh, the uh, levels of uh, your interference generated can be reduced. So, then uh, one of those PWM methods is called as the random PWM. So, what it is is that uh, when we do the sampling of in power electronic converters. So, then uh, the sampling frequency and switching frequencies are most of the times the same. So, you sample uh, your whatever signals you are sampling that means you are sensing the voltages and currents you are sampling it. So, they are at the uh, same frequency the same intervals as your switching cycles that means when you are turning on and off the devices. So, that is what is uh, being shown here the different samples and the different the different sampling cycles and the different switching cycles. Now, uh, then uh, your uh, this cycle you can say that is equal to your switching time period T s. So, one uh, sw uh, switching time period uh, will be equal to 1 by f s the switching frequency. Now, what is observed is that that if we randomize uh, these uh, sampling cycles and switching cycles, then your uh, uh, the uh, spectrum of which had uh, the power at discrete points uh, and which were led to more EMI levels that could be uh, I mean transferred into converted into continuous spectra and that reduces the level of electromagnetic interference. So, what we want to say there is that uh, this is your random PWM. that here you have uh, these uh, sampling cycles are randomized. You can see that that there this is n uh, is uh, uh, how much is this cycle is uh, different than this n plus 1 cycle and then n plus 2 cycle is different than your uh, n plus 1 and similarly n plus 3 is different than n plus 4. So, you are randomizing the sampling cycles. Uh, and uh, then accordingly you can also randomize the switching cycles also. So, you can see here the uh, switching cycles also here are randomized. This is called as the random PWM and it affects in reducing the uh, EMI to certain extent it is basically it changes the frequency spectrum. Now, this sometimes uh, may not uh, be doable because if you are making the sampling cycle random then that affects uh, may affect your controller's performance 
because your controller's bandwidth is many times decided by your sampling frequency and uh, so uh, we would like to have it fixed. So, in that case uh, then uh, uh, what is done is that that uh, a delay is given to the switching cycle. So, here your sampling cycles are same are fixed, but your uh, switching cycles they are randomized. So, there is a random delay that is provided. So, here you can see that this n cycle nth switching cycle it is delayed uh, from the nth sampling cycle. Similarly, here also to the n plus 1 switching cycle there is a delay which is given although n plus 1 of sampling cycle n plus 2 n plus 3 all of them are equal, but the switching cycles you can see that they are unequal that means unequal delays are provided to them. So, they are the switching cycles are randomized. So, that is called as the variable delay random PWM. Now, these can also be used for um, your power electronic converter design. So, in this uh, random PWM method is actually can be used with any uh, sine triangle PWM or space vector PWM any other PWM method that you may be uh, using and by that you to certain extent you can reduce the EMI levels. Now, what happens in EMI filters is that, that uh, if, if you have to attenuate the lower or relatively lower order harmonics or frequencies using EMI filters then they become bigger and their cost increases. So, if some of uh, the relatively lower order frequencies in the spectrum can be eliminated by some of these methods, so you, then you can reduce the size of your EMI filters and so you can reduce the cost of the converter also. Then uh, uh, next uh, uh, the common mode voltages that are present in your uh, motor drives, your electric drives. So, your uh, this is the diagram of uh, the different capacitances that may be present in the motor. So, if you use your stator and your rotor and uh, this is again the stator and then this is the frame of the stator and this rotor is uh, mounted on this uh, shaft and uh, this shaft uh, uh, will be uh, having these uh, bearings and uh, which is then further connected to the frame of the uh, of the motor. So, now again uh, you will be having capacitance between any two of these points. So, like that between the frame and the rotor uh, between the stator and the rotor any where you have the potential difference even slight you will be formation of a capacitance. Similarly, you will have the capacitance between stator and the frame and uh, between your shaft and the bearings. So, uh, so, whatever the common mode voltage that is there. So, let us say if we have a three phase motor. So, the common mode voltage will be V1, V2 plus V3, V1, V2, V3 are the three line voltages divided by 3. So, this will be the common mode voltage. So, if uh, the sum of the three output voltages of your uh, inverter is not uh, your constant, then uh, this VCM will be changing, common mode voltage will be changing and then you have all these capacitances and uh, they actually are connected to the chassis ground and then that will lead to CDV by, by DT the capacitive currents or the common mode currents and then that will lead to problems of interferences. Okay. So, now uh, there are different methods uh, by which this common mode problem can be reduced. Some strategies different switching strategies are used such that that your this common mode voltage VCM is made constant for your uh, motor applications. And uh, many people also uh, use different types of converters like this is an example where an additional leg is used, additional leg is added and such a switching strategy is used such that 
that your uh, these common mode voltage becomes 0. So, if we can make common mode voltage 0 or common mode voltage constant, then uh, uh, your capacitive current associated uh, with your common mode uh, noise uh, uh, at different different places in the electric drive, uh, the you would not be having currents because of it and so you can resolve the, the problem because of common mode voltage. So, these are also some of the ways by which you can reduce the problem of electromagnetic disturbance. So, the key points of uh, this lecture are that, that uh, from the very beginning of design you should be careful about the electromagnetic interference problems and uh, whatever are the different measures that can be taken to reduce it at design stage that should be ensure there are various various different things that can be done and that you can use. Uh, if you do it at the design stage at an early stage, then later on uh, towards the end the cost of your EMI filter and enclosure uh, may reduce. Thank you.